Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Lacey, I'm the owner of Milky Candles and I make videos about life in my 30s. We are gonna make candles today. We are getting ready for an event in Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, four days. I've been having a really hard time keeping things in stock, which is a great problem to have because that means I'm selling stuff. But I'm, I'm like so confused. Like I really need to sit down and look at my math because I'm like, I, why do I have no money? It just goes right back into the business. I put, I'm putting 40% aside for taxes because I had to like dip into my taxes. So that's immediately almost half of what I make. I was paying myself 20%. I think I'm probably just gonna go to 10% for right now because one of the problems that I'm having is I keep like putting money into the pay myself bank account. I put money into my taxes bank account and then I just have what's left over in my checking and I keep thinking like everything that's in my checking can go into materials. Butters is also giving himself a bath in the background so if you hear licking he is going in on his paws. So I keep using that money on materials that I need though, by the way, like I need to buy the materials. And then I'm like, why don't I have money to pay my Shopify bill? Which is basically the monthly plan and how much I have racked up in shipping. But then what's also hard is taking into account how much I spend on shipping myself. So every time I order from Candle Science, every time I order from Uline, every time I order from anywhere, I'm paying for shipping and I like I know that but when I have money in my checking account to spend on materials for some and when I look at how much it costs to make one candle and how much like money I made and then I'm like where when I when I take these two things and I put them together and I'm like how much I've spent how much I've made where's the money most of it goes towards paying for shipping for items like like Uline shipping is so expensive. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure how to do that in my brain. I just feel like I need to just suck it up and get QuickBooks and I feel like it would help me so much. But anyway, I'm also a little hungry right now. So I'm a little complainy, which just happens. So you guys know I was using these uh, ceramic vessels, love them, miss them, please hold. But I love my new vessels so much more. It's gonna be a little bit of a learning curve because I had to buy some taller boxes, which means they're gonna fit in the current boxes that I have right now for shipping a little bit differently. So I'm gonna have to like rewire my brain to figure out how much I can fit in a box. And like, it'll take me a while to get used to that so that I can kind of easily guess which box I'm gonna put things in. But nonetheless, I'm really excited for the vessels. Um, I will be charging more for them because the vessels themselves are just more expensive. So it's just gonna have to be. But the sweet, I think what the sweet spot is gonna be is or are the glass candles that I am making. So um, two or three videos ago, you guys saw that I was like getting ready to launch my glass collection. And I kind of showed you all of the steps that I take to launch a collection and I'll put that in the top right corner um, for you to watch after this video. You can also find it down below in the description box. And I was a little bit nervous because um, A, I have definitely had my feelings about glass candles. Like I was so tunnel vision into my cement vessels at the time that I was like, ah, I don't understand people who just do glass candles. And like now I fully get it. They are so affordable to buy and they're still very beautiful and you can make it exactly what you want it to be. And you can sell it at a price that you're comfortable with. Obviously size is also important because the bigger the candle, the more it's gonna cost. The new vessels I have right now are double and a little bit more than, um, I guess I should say they're plus one and then doubled because like five ounces and then it's like plus one is six and then times two doubled is 12. So, so they're 12 ounces. So they're obviously gonna cost a lot more to make thus a lot more to sell. But I have to remember I'm an online platform and most of the people who buy my candles buy them online. So I don't think I'm gonna have a problem selling the 12 ounce vessels um, for the price I wanna sell them at at market. I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I do think it's gonna be a problem on my Shopify and on my Etsy. I guess I shouldn't say problem, but like it'll be a little bit far and few between because we are seeing such good results of launching the candles that are just the, the glass candles. And I was like so excited. I was like, yes, 
perfect. I love that. And then I went to go buy them again and they're sold out. So I did, however, find them on Uline and I was nervous because I'm like, well, what if the neck isn't the same for the lid? And I was like, but it's gotta be. And I'm like, but what if it's not? And I'm like, well, it, the description, it says it is, but my brain is like, but it might not be, but it might not be. That's, that's literally how my brain works. Um, anyway, they're the same thing. So that made me really happy. But again, purchasing from Uline, so much money in shipping. So that's where we are today. We've got vessels that we need to box for the event and we've got glass candles that we need to make today. I'm still not quite sure if I'm gonna bring the glass candles to the event. I might only bring my larger glass vessels, the 12 ounce, but I, don't, I haven't made up my mind yet. So I don't know, we'll see. But for now, I'm gonna eat and then we're gonna make some stuff. But I was, I was wrong. I was definitely wrong about glass. I'm here again, sticking my words directly into my mouth eating them up because glass is very versatile, very affordable, and I feel like when it comes to our online platform, it's probably gonna be the first go-to purchase and then people will come back for the other vessel. In a recent turn of events, I will not be able to make as many candles as I wanted to because I don't have enough wax. So uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and make the candles for the ones that are just completely out of stock or have one candle left and we'll just let that be that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop here. A, because you saw that I'm running a little bit low of wax, but mostly because I also don't really have lids. <laughs> so it doesn't really make sense for me to make these without the lids. I wanted to purchase the lids separately on purpose because I wasn't even sure that these jars were gonna fit the lids that I typically use. So I need to go ahead and order those lids now that I know that they definitely do. I thought it would be worth it to just wait. Um, that way I return one item, which would be the jars if they didn't fit, rather than two, which would be jars and lids. We're gonna go ahead and call it a day with making candles. We just did two from the Cologne collection because we're out of those. This is my newest thing. So. You guys know that I have been making my own dust covers for quite some time. And after I got these new vessels, the three inch dust cover didn't fit. And there's no circle cutter that is bigger than three inches in diameter, but smaller in 3.5 inches in diameter. Like there's, I need at this point something that is a little bit more customized. I was gonna go ahead and just order dust covers off Etsy, but they weren't gonna be here in time for the event that we have this weekend. This was like a few days ago. So I just did a little bit more research and I found this thing, which you do, you do gotta put your back into it with this. Um, I'm gonna show you how I use it. This is a Fiskars, Fiskars circle cutter. I'll link it below as, as always. But so this is cardstock that I also get from Amazon. I also changed my dust covers a little bit. Aren't they cute? I like them. And I read a bunch of reviews to put something underneath just to make sure that you're protecting the blade and prolonging its life. So that's what we're doing. Basically what happens is you twist this right here and this makes this as loose as possible. So this can come out to here, here, whatever. Like you've got eight inches that you can 
do uh, in diameter. The only thing that I kind of have against this is that you're not necessarily, it's hard to count. For example, this is like 3.1 or 3.2 inches in diameter, but it doesn't really read that way on here because my assumption is that this is roughly three inches. Um, and then you just add some change on top of that. So I basically have just like locked in my settings and I'm not gonna mess with them. Um, but I do know that it's at the seven and then it's like at the third mark. So that's kind of how I keep track. I might end up marking that with a uh, Sharpie. But anyway, so how to measure is a little bit confusing. Like yes, the numbers are there, but it's almost like measuring it backwards a little bit. So I put this on here and I try to just measure it. I like the circle and I like that I cut outside of the circle. I think it makes it look a little fancy. So we're gonna do it like this. So I'm gonna hold it with my left hand. I'm gonna kind of bring it in closer to my stomach so that when I turn it, it can't go past me because the corner of the cardboard is in, in my stomach. And you hold the middle down so that the paper doesn't move as much, but you have to apply pressure onto the blade itself. So I find myself either going really slowly or going um, in a circle twice. And I like to keep a pair of scissors near because see how it kind of did this weird thing under there? So this is basically what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and do five because I'm gonna wrap five candles right now. But it's definitely like a learning curve. I mean, sometimes I have to go back in and cut some of these little hairy pieces. You see that it's not necessarily even. I mean, I really don't care that much about that, but yeah. But we'll see how long I'm willing to put myself through this. At some point, I see myself just wanting to purchase from somebody, but when you're in a pinch and you need them quickly, I feel like this is a really good backup. So at this point, I have lots of different tools for cutting uh, my dust covers. I've also considered though, and let me know what your thoughts are on this, but I've considered putting my candle care card on the dust cover so that I'm like killing two birds with one stone and I'm sort of taking out an expense. I don't know, so just something I thought about. But if I'm being honest, I think most people don't read their candle care cards anyway. I've actually considered just get ridding, uh, getting rid of candle care cards like as a whole because I just think that most people don't read them. But that is an assumption, not a fact. Can you let me know what your opinions are? Sorry if it bothers you that I'm not cutting one, but I just like to cut as many as I need. Um, unless I'm sitting down and doing like a whole session. So I already cleaned up all my candle stuff, but today went by so fast and I started later because I had other errands to run this morning. Everyone's chasing me because I cut a watermelon and they think I have it with me in this moment. Watermelon is the shared snack in our house. But what I ended up doing is I went ahead and cut um, the dust covers for all of these. And yeah, so. That's what I went ahead and did. It took a really long time. I'm still getting used to figuring out that little tool. Like I've learned that when you put your hand down on it to kind of keep it centered, because it like puts a little thing down in the middle, it's best to kind of like rock your hand in the motion that you are cutting in, because I find that sometimes 
if you're rocking your hand in the opposite direction of what you're trying to cut, it then ends up like lifting the blade a little bit and it doesn't cut. So rocking your hand in the direction of how you're cutting it is um, a good idea if you are gonna try to use that tool. Kira is so sad that I only gave her two pieces of watermelon. How dare I? How dare I not just give her the whole watermelon? Anyway, this was a shorter video than normal, I feel like, but thank you guys so much for watching. I love you. Even if you don't love me back, subscribe if you have not already, and I will see you guys in my next video. I was gonna, <laughs> what is that? Okay, bye.